David Wong, author of the book Real World Cryptography with Manning Publications. David, one of the first things you explain in your book is the difference between theoretical cryptography and real world cryptography. What's that? that that's actually a very good question. Um, so, so I, somebody coined these terms, um, real world cryptography, of, often called applied cryptography and theoretical cryptography, where it's mo mostly researchers researching cryptography for the sake of cryptography. Um, and, and in that world, there's all sorts of problems being researched, uh, encryption, how to uh, hide your data, how to have more privacy, how to uh, be able to compute a function securely with some other people without revealing um, the input to your function, like plenty of different functions like that uh, there and problems that people are making up. Uh, mostly problems where uh, you have malicious participants. This, this is all about, um, this is purely the definition of cryptography. You're, you're always in the presence of adversaries. Uh, otherwise, there's no, no real point. Um, yeah, and, and in the real world or applied world or whatever, this is where things impact you, right, as a person. So every day you use your laptop or your mobile phone or, or, or your browser or all these devices and applications, and they all use cryptography. And, and that's what I call this, this applied or real world cryptography. That's what the book is about. Um, and so as, as a normal person, this is what impacts you. As a practitioner, if you want to impact the world uh, directly or, or very quickly, usually, usually you will work in that, um, that part of the, the world. Um, and there's, these two worlds are, are sort of um, kind of segregated in the way that things don't always make their way from the theoretical world to the uh, real world of cryptography. Um, perhaps they're not practical, they're too slow, uh, maybe they're not that useful, or at least they haven't found a use case yet, uh, and these kind of things. And and there's this kind of uh, thread, uh, thin connection that happens uh, from times to times when something makes its way to, to the other side. So that's that's the, the difference between these two worlds. And your book focuses on real world cryptography. Yeah, uh, that's that's most of my uh, career. I've, I've been working in applied cryptography or real world cryptography, um, uh, trying to break uh, real world applications, or studying them, or, or researching them, or building new ones. And and that's why I focus there. Uh, to to me, that's also what's more interesting. There are other books that are more on the theoretical side. Um, and it, it, it's actually usually difficult to find a book that's really uh, real world. Actually, I, I used to give a course on, on, on applied cryptography and my students would come and ask me, okay, okay, like what are good books that I can read? And I always struggled to find good answers because they were either very outdated or uh, too theoretical for them. And they would complain, oh, this is too theoretical and so on. So that's why I, I wanted to write this book also. It's because I never had it when I wanted to read it. And so I, I sort of wrote it for myself as well. That's a very good reason to write a book. Uh, how fast did this field evolve? So when will your book become outdated, do you think? That's, that's, a, that's a very good question also. That's, um, cryptography has been attacked by, by these cryptanalysts who, who focus more on attacking cryptography. Um, and sometimes in the past, we've had to change algorithms, meaning that, for example, we, we had an algorithm called MD5, uh, which is not gonna get too much into the details, but it's, it's a cryptographic algorithm. Uh, and MD5 was broken and broken so bad that we had to move away. And, and unfortunately, so much applications out there was using it that the, the deprecation process was very, very painful. And so you have a, a number of books out there that people are still reading that explain to you how MD5 works and, and treat it as, a, as an algorithm that you can use today, but that's not true. Like you shouldn't use that anymore. So I, I mentioned some of these algorithms in my book and I also mentioned what could break um, the more modern algorithms that I spend more time explaining in the book. Um, and one example for, uh, is, is quantum computers. You might've heard of quantum computers and how 
they will affect cryptography and they might break a lot of the algorithms that we use today. Um, so I have a chapter on that, but it's not sure yet if it's going to become really a thing and, and replace maybe maybe half of the, the algorithms that I talk about in, about in the book. So my book might become outdated as soon as quantum computers become a thing, if it ever becomes a thing. Uh, otherwise, I think it'll stay up to date for, for quite some time as we have a lot of confidence in the algorithms that we use uh, nowadays.